So, hi, I'm Varun here. I've been working on solar for like five or six years, been part of the Lucene Solar Project. I work at a company called Lucidworks, where like part of my job is helping develop solar and implementing solar for our clients. Uh, what I'm going to, I'm a Lucene Solar Committer as well. And in this talk, what I plan on talking is solar road to auto scaling. That means uh, back in solar four, we built solar cloud, which means it built distributed capabilities into solar and how we added APIs. But with APIs, we needed more things like metrics to get more insights into your system. Based on that, you could stitch up some common recipes to make sure that your cluster is always healthy and how solar can take all these experiences and build for it going forward to help you manage your cluster in a easier fashion. So that was my agenda for the talk and I'm going to start with just a quick introduction of solar cloud. So solar cloud is a set of uh, features which add distributed capabilities to solar. So in this example, like I'm showing you, you have like a two node solar installation, which has uh, two shards and like replicas for each shard. And Zookeeper is used for coordination between the solar servers. Now, the key design aspects here were there was like solar cloud doesn't have a master node. That means there is no one single node which accepts all the rights. The way it works is every shard has its own leader, which is in charge of accepting rights. But for query time, all replicas or all shards are the same. So anyone is capable of serving queries to you. So this is like a quick introduction of Solar Cloud. I'm assuming most of us here are familiar with it. Uh, what I'm going to now do is move on to what are APIs that Solar supports and what's this new things that we built into it. Essentially, what we did is we built a lot of APIs to help you build your cl uh, cluster. So it was more like we added collections APIs to add make collections, like to delete replicas, to add shards, stuff like that, right? So now we have a more regularized uh, API. Everything is like sort of REST APIs. So you have HTTP, like you can configure most things in your solar cluster over APIs. We have a V2 API which got released in solar 6.5. That means you have your new JSON compliant. I'm going to show you an example in just a minute. Uh, with the V2 APIs, we have introspection, you have APIs for your schema and you have APIs for your configs. So slowly we've added support for most things in your cluster to be driven by APIs and you don't need to hand edit XML or thing or like mess around with Zookeeper a lot. Here's an example of a API, right? With the V2 stuff. So you have your endpoint, which is like the slash V2. Then you specify collections because you want to know what are my collection APIs and I'm saying introspect. So what this gives out is all the APIs that all the collection APIs what are the parameters it describes the api and it tells you how to use it so it's very self understanding apis if you're interesting more about these v2 apis there's a talk later today just specifically on it so i'd recommend you to go for that one and here's an example of how you would create a collection with the v2 apis right so you would say create and then you would give it a name a config num shard so the parameters stay the same but it's JSON structure, more friendly and more dis self describing. Like I said, solar has a lot of APIs that we built, right? So you can add replica, you can call a backup collection, you can restore a collection, you can delete an alias, you can create an alias, you can add a shard, you can delete a shard, you can do a lot of things, right? But it's not that easy to use them. Like when I say it's not that easy, what I mean is you can call add replica. It's a command which supports a few parameters. So it's straightforward to use. But when you design a cluster and you have to maintain your own cluster, you need to have intelligence built in to figure out where should the replica be sitting, right? 
I can't simply tell solo add a replica because then it could pick any node in from your cluster, right? For all you know, it ends up on the same host which is hosting your other replica. So you actually don't get that much of redundancy, right? So if you're hosting multiple JVMs on the same host. So people needed to build these tools to figure out when you call add replica, how do I smartly figure out based on my cluster topology, where should it go to, right? So these APIs are there, but we have like Solo is working towards like with the auto scaling that I'm gonna like lead to with how this helps you manage your cluster in a better fashion. So this is like the APIs that we have. Now, another thing with the APIs is we don't have much insights as to when to use them. So do we know like at what trigger, uh, at what point should we add more replicas because we're getting a lot of queries so solar always had uh, like some metrics that it was exposed through gmx and a rest endpoint but in the 63 through 65 releases we kind of overhauled how the metrics work so we collect a lot more metrics we use a library called drop wizard metrics so it helps us collect a lot more information which you can then consume in your monitoring tools you can hit solar with a rest endpoint to figure out what metrics are exposed and I'll show you some of it in just a minute. So the way drop wizard APIs work, it has like five types of, uh, what do you say, counters. So it has something called counters, which are basically just telling you long values, right? How many times was my, how many times did a search request come in? You have meters which basically is like an exponential time decay. So it tells you within the one minute, the five minute, like a, it's like load average. So within the one, five, 15 minute time intervals, how many queries or how many update requests came into my system, right? Then you have meters, which is basically telling you your mean, your max, your median, your percentiles. So the meter, the histograms give you that. With your timers, you get stuff like a snapshot of where like the current uh, statistics of your system are and similarly you have gauges so all of these are basically terminologies that drop wizard uses to expose uh, all your metrics now the way solar designed it it designed it so that it grouped metrics into so-called four registries so what we did is we classified some things as jvm metrics that means whatever uh, uh, like your HTTP thread pools, your garbage collection metrics, your CPU load averages, stuff like that went into your JVM metrics. Then you have a node level metric registry. You have your core level. That means for each replica in your index, what are my metrics? And then you have your jetty level. So let's, oh, I move back instead of forward. So what is a JVM registry, right? It tells you information about your OS memory. It tells you GC statistics. It tells you what are your physical memory st stats, right? Now you have your node level metrics, which is basically telling you how many like solar has authentication and authorization. So were people hitting your authorization endpoint and how many were failures, how many were success? So maybe you know there's a DDoS happen attack happening or someone's just internally in your system trying to hit your endpoint and he doesn't know the password or something like that. It tells you API request time. So it gives you updates and selects how, how are they performing, what is the percentiles. It gives you counts. The core registry gives you request handler metrics and it gives you indexing statistics. The jetty level registry, it gives you thread pool counts. So it tells you currently in my system, how many search requests are going on at that point of time, right? These level of insights, we never had it in the past. So along with it being exposed as a GMX and a rest endpoint, with the drop wizard uh, API, we also have something called reporters. What reporters are basically, it helps you push these metrics to external systems. 
so if you have your own monitoring tool or if you're using any third party tool it can reporters api can help you push data to these systems now solar already ships with a few reporters built in so if you're using graphite or if you want to just log it out to a file and then you have a tool to ship that to your own reporting api you can use it that way and what you can also do is you can write a custom reporter so with this plugin what you can do now is you want to push data to your own reporting tool so drop wizard itself comes with like third party library so to say for these uh, reporting tools a lot of them come inbuilt so they're like 10 plus reporter databases that are already there if you just go to the drop wizard third party library website so what i did as a proof of experiment when i was preparing for the slides is i was like i'm just going to push this to influx db because i found this tool called grafana which was easy to visualize and i was actually got like i got it set up and it just took like a few lines of code to write a custom reporter so if you follow the github project there it's it shows you it, it has instructions and it's like just a hundred odd lines of code to glue it into the solar reporter api so it's very easy now to even push it to your system so till now now we've shown how did metrics come in and why do we need metrics right so now that we have metrics your tools can consume these metrics and use the solar apis to now say in more intelligently decide when should i add a replica when should i shard my system more uh met insights like that right so now what i'm gonna talk about is a few recipes so how can i take a metrics x x and then say i want to increase a throughput of my system or something like that right so i'm gonna talk a little bit about that just before i do that i want to bring out this one concept of solar cloud because i'm gonna like use a recipe which kind of relates to this so i'm going to talk a little bit about the solar replication mode what that means is how does replication work in solar cloud right so solar's default replication model is designed for consistency what that means is when you add a document to the index it goes to the shard leader. Now that shard leader writes the document to the transaction log. Once it has written the document to the transaction log, it writes it to its own local Lucene index and it forwards the request to all the other replicas that the shard could have, right? So you'll have many replicas for each shard. Now all the rep replicas also write to the transaction log at this point and then they write to the index now the client which where or the like if you manually send a document to index will only get back success once all the replicas have acknowledged success or failure but like it's a synchronous call you wait till all of them reply back obviously if a replica fails to write solar will put that node into recovery but it's a block like it's so it's you're bounded by your slowest replica right now with solar 7.0 which will be out in a few couple of months what we added is more replication modes so basically we said we'll uh, bring back like a pull model so pe use cases where you don't have say a near real time use case where you don't want documents to be searchable instantly or where you want to separate reads from writes you're going to be able to create a new type of replication for a replica so you, and where you will only tell that replica to pull from your leader you're not never going to forward the document to that so you're isolating a read from a write so these are replication modes that are going to be there in 7.0 and there'll be talks and blogs about this in the following weeks because a lot of this work is already in there with that i'm going to talk about a three like styles of recipes using our apis and the metrics that we now collect so the first style is uh, how do we increase query throughput right 
so how do we know when our queries are not performing well so the syntax i'm using here is the top the front top box is basically the metrics i've just taken three example metrics here that were exposed and the names of these metrics and maybe we should use this to judge when like are we not being able to like are we bottlenecking on something right so the first is uh, query dot select request times so this gives you stuff like my percentiles your max and uh, statistics like that you can find the system load average so this is pretty cool now you can even know the solar jvm what how much cpu is it or load average is it consuming and you can also find out through the metrics the gc activity for the process right so these seem like fairly straightforward things you should be monitoring and with this if you want to increase query throughput what would one do right you could simply add replicas and just scale out horizontally if you scale add more replicas you're reducing the load on each server so in turn it might even help you with your query latency as well and what you can also do or like if you don't want to add a new replica if you don't have near real-time re requirements some of your replicas can use the new replication model that i just spoke about so they are just serving query traffic that means they are not indexing documents they are fetching indexes from the leader so there's a delay but if you don't care about like it being one minute uh, stale than your leader you can isolate these reads and that way you can increase your query throughput now switching gears how do we improve a query latency right so you can measure stuff like again in the select the request times you'll get out the like this is the 95 percentile you get the five minute rate you get the 15 minute rate and you also get statistics like your thread pool uh, how many threads are being used right now in the system so you know how many concurrent queries are running now how do we improve latency one thing to understand here is a search for that shard is single threaded that means if a search is for that shard takes five seconds we can't do anything to optimize that so the one way we could go about it to reduce query latency is you could add more shards or you could split existing shards right so that way if a shard was taking five seconds to query now since you have two shards you're going to be using more parallelism and you're going to be getting faster response times obviously there's always a trade-off between throughput and latency but that's a strategy one could use uh, and there are other downsides to this like i was pointed out while i was talking about these strategies if you're using like say faceting which is you're using you're having lots of shards and your facets are very complicated since you have to merge facets across shards and you have to like calculate more sometimes that overhead could be more than what a splitting like could give benefit you could benefit out of so something worth trying the simplest thing that i ask people to do is create a collection which is one shot in an environment keep adding documents to it till you see query slas that you would expect it solar can keep right so if you want queries to be under 500 milliseconds keep pumping documents into a one shot collection and querying run a test to see at what point at how many documents does it start getting slower than 500 milliseconds right and then you can simply take that and correlate with the number of documents you plan on having in your system eventually or the current like how much you plan on having right now and decide your sharding strategy so that's just like that's a that's the way i tell users to go about sharding and improving your query latency now what about indexing right so if you add a lot of documents to the index like i've seen people like add a couple of million documents a second 
how do we achieve those type of throughputs what we do is you could obviously measure stuff like your system load average you would see gc activity another indication of when can a system not handle so much indexing throughput is because of heavy gc or the system always being pegged nodes are going into recovery because your writes aren't being acknowledged within a particular timeout the nodes are going into recovery and you're seeing lots of merges happening in your system so it even exposes statistics like merges through the metrics so if you, if you see like cases like this and if you really want to push your indexing more what could we do right we could simply add more shards again that way we are also scaling on writes and if you have like more disks that you can attach these shards to or like that way is a common practice where people can then scale out their writes if you're doing bulk indexing you could like reduce the number of replicas for that period of bulk ingestion so you've can like you've indexed like your hundred or few hundred million documents and then you add the replication factor back up to three or whatever you would want to so that would lead to faster bulk injection times you can also use the combination of these new replication types that i spoke about to increase indexing throughput right so if you want to keep three replicas or 10 replicas but if you don't have your near real time requirements why should you write to all 10 of them if they can catch up after a few minutes well and good right so another way you could improve indexing throughput like this so now that we've understood how to use metrics combine them with apis what is solar doing starting solar 7 to help make this easy for you right so these are the set of features we're going to be calling it's like auto scaling so to say so it'll help you manage your cluster design your cluster better it replaces solar's existing replica placement strategy to with a more generic policy engine so you can uh, like write your own policies and you, so with auto scaling there'll be concepts like an event and a trigger so you can act on events with triggers and stuff like that so i'm going to be talking about it in general like you know just a second so the first concept is what is a policy a policy is essentially a set of rules that you can use at a cluster and a collection level let's take an example right you can solar has a concept of an overseer node this overseer node is in charge of operations like admin operations so when you add a replica the overseer node actually takes the request and like fans it out to the actual node that should be adding the replica so what if you want to see say that i have a very big cluster and the overseer should get its own dedicated node so what you could simply say is for node role as which is not an overseer make sure you have you don't have any replicas on that so you can say don't have replicas on my overseer node you can uh, you can design another policy by saying for a collection for every replica or for every shard make sure that no single node has more than two of them right so it will be able to figure out when when you call an add replica you don't like it's now you, if even if you don't specify the node it should go, go to uh, you can give it sensible defaults like this right this is part of solar 7 this is rather going to be part of solar 7 and what you can do is when you create a or uh, when you call the collections api you can specify these policies so that the collections apis will respect these policies now comes these concepts called events and triggers so what is an event an event can be like a node loss 
or a node got added into the system or my search rate went over 1500 QPS, right? So these are events that you could define in the solar uh, auto scaling APIs. With an event, what you would do is you could perform actions based on triggers. So what would a, uh, what would a trigger do? It would compute a plan and set of actions that need to be carried out. Let's say like what you had asked the system was on a node added event. Make sure that I add more replicas so that I make sure that that node automatically gets filled up, right? So when a node gets actually added, a trigger will compute a plan saying for these collections, you had asked that I maintain a replication factor of something. So here are the n add replica calls that I need to make on this new node. It can carry it out for you or it could like by default just give you this plan by saying here are the API calls you should be making in the system. So it's not gonna like you have the option to just have it printed out and an operator then says, yeah, this makes sense. I'm gonna go execute it, right? This is still a work in progress. So it's been worked upon. Like if you follow this Jira, you will see all the work that's been happening in the community with this and looks like by the way this is turning out it's probably not going to be in 7.0 a lot of this events and triggers and how to act on them will be part of solar 7.1 which will follow 7.0 in a few couple of months so that's the rough plan now what's next uh, we feel like uh, lucene solar will probably be releasing 7.0 over the next month or so like in a couple of months all of these that i spoke about right like apis then i spoke about metrics i spoke about some recipes and then the auto scaling all of them will have more detailed and multiple talks at lucene revolution and over the coming months since they'll start actually being used in practice and like the auto scaling stuff will be part of solar 7.x and like watch out for this space and see what's upcoming so that's all i had to present thank you yeah okay do you have some question about there i don't know okay <laughs> Will there be any metrics on replica, historic replica failure in, in terms of fencing off a node that's starting to have problems? W would you need to be storing kind of recovery history separately to fence off nodes or do you reckon that's going to be something that would be in? Okay, in so what you're saying is, if I understand your question, what you're asking is when lots of replicas are going into recovery or if they've gone in the past on do the, the metrics capture that information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh i don't know as far as i know that's not something we've added so it doesn't all these metrics right uh they're not persisted so they can go beyond solar reloads but if you restart a jvm they're gone mm -hmm. uh but at least we could probably expose them that's like worth something you could at least create a jira like just show in the last n minutes how many nodes have gone into recovery or stuff mm. uh, sorry as you said as you mentioned it would be good to integrate with them right because they would be able to integrate yeah that's that's a fair enough point so yeah i would say like if you at least point this out uh, create a jira and if if you have like if you have time or if you are inclined to like patches always welcome so other question yeah yeah hi thank you for the talk um what i want to ask you is uh, the rest rpc you are actually present here do they are uh, available also for uh, solar slave architecture in solar or do they are uh, are there 
some REST APIs you can't use in a solar slave architecture. So, so your question is, all these events, triggers, and recipes, would they be for solar master slave? Or are these just for solar cloud? Yes. Okay. So all of these recipes that I spoke about are for solar cloud because these are like sharding and replicas. Like, I guess you could translate a replica to just adding more slaves, but I don't know whether you shard with master slave currently in your architecture. Technically it does support it, but otherwise a lot of these concepts were like based on solar cloud. People were using like master slave. Uh, please check out the new replication mode, which I spoke about. So it's going to be called uh, pull replicas, which basically integrates this master slave concept because these these pull replicas are essentially like slaves always pulling indexes of the leader. So you can then start using the solar cloud management capabilities and all the sharding and the cluster capabilities that it's built in with your solar cloud uh, with your master slave architecture so to say okay and so uh, and the matrix uh, rest rp uh, is is it all will it work for uh, um, master slave yes or metrics or are definitely part of master slave because these are at each jetty level so you'll get exposed all of these metrics oh, okay thank you Regarding the the pull node level, you you were talking about the pull uh, um, replicas, VI, yeah. pull pull at replicas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, is there any um, thing like you can define if it uh, what's the state of the index it's it's pulling? Like for example, only fully optimized index or all kinds of uh, merges. So is is a, is there a way to specify that, or is it just a general replication? Will it take the complete transaction log at any time? In in, in uh, from what I've seen, the way it works, like this is a new feature going to be released in 7.0, is it's basically always periodically syncing indexes with the leader. So in your own master slave, like you could say sync on commit or sync on optimize. I don't know whether those triggers are particularly built in just yet. I, I'm not aware of it. Uh, maybe if we sit offline, I'll show it to you. But in my, what I know till now is you can set up a poll interval and it's constantly syncing the indexes like which got changed in that period of time. So if segments were merged or segments were added, it's gonna pull those and sync up. Okay, so I suppose so. Okay, awesome. Question? Like, no. I'll be around and like I think a bunch of us like from the Lucene Solo people are here. So like, feel free to ask us questions. <laughs> okay, so thanks, Varun. Yeah. And now we have a lunch break and we just start half past two. Okay, thank you. <laughs>